All right, what's up everybody? This is your girl, Miss Sophia the Diva, and I know I am totally, totally behind. And y'all probably like, what the hell is she doing talking about Queen Sugar? Chat, I meant to do this last night, but I was tired. As a matter of fact, I was so tired. It felt like I had drank alcohol last night, and I hadn't, and drug myself into bed and pass out on the bed, woke up at 3 o'clock this morning, like, why are all the lights on, okay? So, anywho, I'm behind on my reviews, but I wanted to try to get these two in before uh, here on the West Coast we get the uh, season finale. So, the first episode that I'm behind on is Queen Sugar Season 1, Episode 11, All Good. Um, this particular episode is the one where we see Charlie in her wheelhouse, spinning her mind, trying to figure out how she can make this happen. Uh, we see that she is, uh, she is a mastermind of her business. She is the CEO, okay? Dang, yeah, what you mean, dude? Dude, what? Yeah, I know I'm behind. I'm behind, girl. Diva be trying and I'm anal. Normally, I probably would have just reviewed, um, episode 12, but I just feel like I should review all of them because I've been doing it all season. I'm gonna keep doing it. When this episode opens, as you know, <laughs> dang it. Oh, okay. Yeah, girl. I I didn't know I was that tired. Um, and I am working solo dolo this week in my group. Um, so it's just it's a lot going on. I I was supposed to go pick up my car today, and that didn't even happen. And this episode opens with Too Sweet on uh, sleep, and we're still concerned very much about him because the parallel of this story is like reality. Only thing is, this kid uh, committed suicide uh, that was in Rikers Islands for three years, being harassed, beaten, and possibly, I think he was even possibly sexually assaulted uh, while in Rikers. Browder, I just remember that was his last name. His mother died, they believe, from a broken heart. Too sweet is having that meltdown because even though he's out on bail, there is uncertainty as to when, when am I going to have a trial, when is this going to be settled, it, do I have to go back to that horrible place? Um, Nova gives him this great inspiring speech telling him that the world is basically his oyster. He can do whatever he needs to do. Do not allow them to, you know, break your spirit. I said, go ahead, Sister Nova. Go ahead. Hey, Amen. I receive it. Yes, girl. I needed to hear those words, too. And I, I know exactly how she feels, even though. Uh, she, she's a reporter, but when I clerked for the public defender's office, I used to go home many nights after leaving the county jail, interviewing clients, some of which I felt were not guilty, but were victims of the criminal justice system. I used to go home and cry. Yeah, Ashanti tonight, and that's why I'm trying to get these in before they come on. But yeah, it's, 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 it's one of those things I used to go home and cry because I was like, how am I going to help my clients when I know the odds are stacked against them? You know, I used to ask other public defenders that I worked with because I was like, how do you all deal with this? This is very mentally taxing and, 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 and trying to save everybody and help everyone. It's just, it's crazy. So I understand how Nova feels about trying to help people that she knows are being mistreated and abused and targeted by the system that is supposed to protect us. But as we're learning in this 21st century, we are learning more and more that the system was not designed for some of us in mind. It was designed to keep some of us imprisoned and enslaved. And that's the bottom line. Blue and Darla. Lord have mercy. I guess this gonna be the family affair. Poor Miss V. I feel bad for her, honey, because she ain't gonna... She, I just knew her and Ralph Angel was going to make it, honey, but they, they ain't going to make it. I think Miss Darla really is living a clean and sober life, and Ralph Angel is like, heck yeah. Get my family back. We learn in this episode that poor little Blue has a bully named Jamal. And we know why Blue is being um, bullied is because if you remember in the opening episode, he was going to have a birthday party and no one wanted to come until Miss V said she was coming. Uh, because Blue's a little different uh, from other uh, boys. He likes to play with Barbie dolls and, and dolls. And which now we know in this in this time period, we are currently moving towards a genderless uh, labeling of toys and, and things. So if boys want to play with pink 
uh, and dolls they can if girls want to play with G.I. I said well hell I guess I've been genderless a long time because I had male cousins I was playing with He-Man okay and uh, I like to watch wrestling but I also love Barbie too I remember y'all remember Magical Move Barbie her little hands would come up and that's all she would do she could comb her hair y'all remember that okay so I, I take it from this scene that Darla may have had an uncle or a father or somebody that was taught her how to box because Blue was like, he's bigger than me. She, she was like, son, that don't matter. Just pop him in the nose just like that. Just go one, two, one, two. I was like, oh, okay, girl. See, Blue gonna get in trouble. And then when Ralph Angel walked in, I was thinking, oh, hell, daddy ain't gonna like that. So next thing, you know, he's like, that's not how you do it. And, and then they end up in a pal. I was like, oh, it's a family affair. Oh, well, it was a family affair, all right. Darla takes Blue to school. Miss V talking about, I didn't know uh, Ralph Angel had gotten a babysitter. And did y'all see that dark shadow that kind of came over Darla's face? And I've seen it again in the next episode, too. I was like, hmm. She a little, uh, I mean, she's a she's a, a encourager, stand by your man type of woman. But at the same time, I think she can be a little manipulative. I was like, oh, okay. She was like, I'm his mother. And I was like, girl, didn't nobody know? We just knew you were a crackhead, okay? So she tells uh, Miss V about the bully. And Miss V says she wasn't aware, but she would keep an eye out. And uh, Darla said, well, if anything happens, you know, give you know, give me a call, too, and gives her number. Well, it didn't take long before Miss V had to call. Child, blue to knock the crap out of his bully. I said, see, that's what y'all get. Never underestimate the ones you be picking on because you, you catch these hands and you get ass whipping, okay? And apparently, Blue must have put it on him. I was like, girly boy, where? Okay, he hurt that little boy because the parents were mad to my, the daddy. To, I said, I see where the little boy get it from, too. To my, I, is this the one that be uh, playing with them dolls? And Ralph Angel was like, hold up, hold up. That, that that ain't no doll now. He that's his that's his that's his toy. He's about well maybe if you bought your son proper toys, maybe he wouldn't uh be getting picked on and bullied. And then the mama was like, and my son had to have an ice pack. I was like, if he had to have an ice pack, then yeah, that mean Blue got the best of him. Okay, so Miss V basically says it's conflict resolution. If we can't resolve this, y'all need to go and talk to y'all kids. Uh, you know, otherwise they gonna be suspended. So, when they leave it, Ralph Angel, you know how they like to put their hand in the small of their woman's back as if to show ownership. Men, y'all know y'all do that. And so, um, as they were walking out, Miss V was like, <laughs> all I could do was cry. <laughs> I was like, poor Miss V, I was rooting for you, girl. I was rooting for you. And I just want to say that I really enjoy the moments that the father-son moments that blew and um, his dad have, um, it just, especially like when Charlie came by the farm to visit, and they were making breakfast and he was teaching his son how to cook. I thought that was, that touched my heart. And plus, I just love little kids. And Blue, he is on it. His, um, the casting director that got him on, she, she did a good job of casting him. Aunt Vi, aren't we all so happy for Aunt Vi? Y'all, I love Aunt Vi. One of the main reasons I love Aunt Vi is because Aunt Vi reminds me of my Aunt Peggy, in a way. Those of you who know me uh, know that uh, I have an aunt who passed away. God, I just remember it was 2003, April 2003. And so uh, I guess that would make it 13 years now. And so she was one of my favorite people. And so in some ways... Even the way she looks a little bit reminds me of my Aunt Peggy. So I always enjoy Aunt Vi. Um, so, uh, honey, she is turning the peach, I mean, she's turning the high yellow into the peach pit juke joint after dark. And if y'all know what the peach pit is, y'all know. Y'all grew up in the 90s, okay, in the 80s and 90s, you know what I'm talking about. So, you know, everybody's hustling and bustling, getting this together. Uh, Clive is in meltdown mode because he see liquor coming in and she was like, hush, don't worry about it. You know, we're going to get you out of the red and into the black. Uh, he was talking about church group becoming. She was like, child, they know Jesus turned water to wine. It was like, amen. You can drink, just don't be drunk. Okay, there you go. When the night comes, 
it's a whole family affair. Everyone is helping, okay? Even Darla and Aunt Vi is actually being nice to little Darla. I said, okay, okay, we, you know, give her a second chance. You know, she messed up, but okay. I was glad to see that Nova bought two sweets so he could be interacting with people again and see that there are people that love and care about him. Him and Micah seem to be developing a relationship and that might be a good thing because that way, you know, Micah can, you know, get... I ain't saying, you know, he got to turn like the kid, but he need a little street in him, okay? Because sometimes being underexposed opens you up to some things you that will blow your mind. That's all I'm going to say. So in two sweet, it rub off on him, you know. Maybe they can go have a basketball date or something. I thought Unvised fashions were fabulous. Oh my God, that zebra print dress was everything. It was giving me life in the wig. Honey, you know, that's her sassy wig. When she got the curly wig on, that's her sassy wig. Okay, when she got the short ones on, that's I'm an aunt. Godmother, take care of these cheering mode, okay? It turns out to seem like what seems to be a good night. However, let me flash back. So, Micah is, him and Sister Kiki are really getting together. And uh, he did get into the school, okay, that he wanted to get into. Uh, he's walking Sister Kiki to school. He learns that, you know, he got into the school. His dad was supposed to come down there, but dad stroked the check to make that little situation on the phone conversation go away. So uh, he, you could see he was disappointed that he wasn't going to get to see his dad. Even though he's like stuck, like, I hate my dad, but I love my dad. I hate my dad, but I love my dad. One of those. While he's out walking, um, his little friend... Uh, Mr. Reminuel comes by and it was almost like a Michael Jackson I saw mommy kissing Santa Claus moment for Micah because Remy and Charlie are uh, hugged up and kissing. He had just heard his mom say, you know, that it was over between her and his dad. So to see his mom say those words and then walk in and catch him kissing, he has a real problem with it, goes into kind of a meltdown. Uh, I did feel as though he does not know how to stay in a child's place. And I feel like, like on Vi said, maybe you need to take some ass. He need an ass with him. But he was shocked that his mom was kissing him and Remy didn't know what to say. It was an awkward moment. And it continues to be awkward up until the night at the high yellow. In between that, uh, Remy, I appreciate this man. He gonna call Charlie and tell her, I know it ain't right, uh, but, uh, uh, I'm sorry that Micah had to see that, but shh, I want you, girl. So, now, Charlie is having feelings as well after this awkward moment. Um, because, wait a minute, I'm missing something. Oh, what happened, how her, Remy, the whole family had a family meeting because they're trying to figure out how to get the cane because no one is going to do business with the Landrys or the Boudreaux because Boudreaux and Landrys murdered males in their family. We learned that in the last episode. There's an option to take it to some place called St. James. I'm like, hell, and they say it would take 16 hours. I said, 16 hours or six hours? Because it seems like to me, Louisiana ain't that big. Or is Louisiana that big to have 16 hours worth of road to cover? I'm just asking. They decide that they're going to take it to St. James. Remy says it's a go. But he also says it's time for them to get a farm loan because that's when Charlie announces I'm getting a divorce and my attorney has advised me not to touch the joint accounts that Davis and I share. Here's some advice, people. Always have a rainy day fun on the side for yourself. I'm not married, but I have heard I have a couple of friends that are. I have more than a couple of a few, and I've heard that advice from them, too. And no, it's not to say that they want to leave their spouses. It's just that it's good for you to have a family, a joint account, your account, his account. And maybe you want to say something on the side. I don't, I don't know. So they're going to look into getting a farm loan, and they're going to have someone come and appraise the property and value of the crops. And that's when the kiss happens, and Micah comes in, and he's all upset and in his feelings, and he stays in his feelings for a while. Because he's decided he's just going to give his mama the silent treatment. I was like, he need his butt beat. Charlie is awkward and uncomfortable. She's having that moment. Turns out Charlie was a good girl. Charlie was married to Davis for 18 years. And uh, that's the only man she's ever slept with. Which made me even more angry at Davis. I was like, you had a good woman and a good girl. 
And I guess she just went, she was too inexperienced or too freaky or wasn't freaky enough. So you felt like you had to go out and buy some hoes. That's foul. She goes, sees her sister, uh, Nova. Nova said, oh my God, really? Like I, well, I guess you, okay, girl. So then she performed some sort of Nigerian sensuality goddess Oshan. Charlie can't take it seriously. Uh, cause she just up there laughing and giggling, which I probably would have been too. Cause I'd be like, girl, what you saying over me? Cause that sounds like some voodoo shit. And you know, I know Jesus, excuse my language, using that both together, but y'all know what I'm saying. You know what I'm saying? So anyway, I don't know about all that. That's one of them old ancient African gods. I, I don't know anything about that. If y'all know something about Oshan, I did look it up though. So I did know it was Nigerian and I did talk to my boyfriend about it. Who y'all, who everybody who knows me know my boyfriend, his family is originally from Nigeria. Um, he was telling me about that too. And he was like, if it is, it's some pagan stuff. And I was like, oh, okay, well, we ain't gonna touch that. See, Charlie, uh, girl, that's what he told me, Danielle. That is what he told me. So I'm gonna try to go through this one using my notes because I really enjoyed this conversation. So, uh, he will be going to Gardini Prep. Micah is going to be going to Gardini Prep. That's one of the best schools in New Orleans, apparently. Um, there's a champagne brunch for the parents. Guess who's going to be there? Owner of the New Orleans Stingers, which, of course, we know is fictitious because we know it is now the New Orleans Pelicans. Shout out to my friend, Mike Ruffin, who is an assistant coach for that team. University of Tulsa, go to you. Uh, for the Pelicans. The Pelicans. She's getting ready, and I noticed that Charlie put that ring on again. And I know why, because the setup is real. But there's a conversation that she has with Aunt Vi that I appreciate. And that's why another reason why I love Aunt Vi. She tells Charlie that she's very proud of her uh, for thinking about herself and putting herself first. She said, when they don't realize what they have in us and violate the love we give, we got to learn to cut them loose. And uh, she said, it took me way too long to learn it with Jimmy Dale. And I'm very happy to learn that you are not making the same mistake. Um, powerful words from uh, Vi. And then, of course, Charlie has to plug in because I'm rooting for Vi and Hollywood to get back together. But after these last couple of episodes, I don't know, honey. You know, Charlie said, well, does Hollywood fall in those categories of Davis and uh, Jimmy Dale? And she goes, no. And then she's like, well, then you need to call him. Uh, at the Champagne Brunch... So here at the Champagne Brunch, uh, after leaving the farm, she goes to uh, talk to the Stingers owner, lets him know that he should make an offer to Davis. And he was like, I thought you really weren't handling Davis' stuff. She was like, I am the CEO. And I said, girl, that's right. Let him know that you are the CEO. Okay. She said, whether he's a gentleman or a gigolo, it's all about how it's packaged. I was like, okay, girl. Okay, so he can go pose on Playgirl now because he, he a hoe. That's all I got to say. He lack holes and he a hoe. We'll see. We'll see when I get ready to talk about this next episode how Charlie manipulates this situation in her favor. Uh, she meets up with Ralph Angel. Uh, the uh, There's a guy, I forgot what he's called, but I guess some sort of farm appraiser. Um, he comes and tells them that they're, if they ever do a full crop, it's going to be worth $4.1 million dollars. Uh, which more, which is more than enough for someone to give them a loan. Jacob Boudreaux, I guess he ain't used to hearing no, honey. He done showed up at the front door talking about, I wanted to see where we were with our offer. I offered you $4 million. And in my mind, I'm thinking, why would they sell that back to you if they're going to get $4 million for 800 acres if they ever do a full crop that means that they could be getting money on top of money every year because lord knows the world is not going to stop one sugar okay and lord knows i prefer cane sugar okay in everything so he, he's such a dick because he says things like it would be a shame if this happened oh i heard about y'all's little loan guess what it was denied and you not gonna sell to me and charlie stepped to him and of course she had to keep little brother in check because you know i said lord please don't let ralph angel go back there and get another handgun please do not let him go get another handgun we don't need that you on parole but when he said, how can't anybody see if you accept my offer? Ralph was like, hell no. To the no, no, no. Okay, no, he didn't say that. And so basically he said he can make things very difficult for them. She's like, is that a threat? He was like more like a hypothetical. She told him for so long, the Landrys and the Boudreaux have had power in this parish. 
but I'm here to tell you the times are about to change. And I was like, whoo, girl, here's my thing with the bank loan. I think that they should definitely think about seeking uh, going outside of Louisiana, period, and getting another loan. Comment down below if you think that they should do research and due diligence to try to find another bank because it can't just be that one bank deciding if they can get a loan. I'm like, is the door really closed? Come on now, guys. Let's keep it real. Flash forward back to the high yellow. When Charlie comes in, there's Remy and her son. Nova had a conversation with Micah to let him know that not everything is in black and white and that your parents are people. And one day you will see them as that. Michael rationalizes this in his little 15 year old mind and he realizes you know what it's all good mama should be happy so when she walks into the high yellow she looks at him and he gives him this uh she gives he gives her the look of approval because earlier he wouldn't even talk to her like when she was talking to Aunt Vi he gonna walk in there to my high Aunt Vi I'm going to the mall with sister Kiki and her friends and then she's like but how are you getting her and that's when I was like, me whoop is behind. I was like, you do need to, you know, he a little privileged, but he need a little tightening up, Charlie, because there is no way that I could have gotten away with that with my mom. The taste would have been knocked out my mouth, and I, then I would have started speaking. I'm just saying, because Susie Mae did not play. That ends episode 11. Queen Sugar, season one, episode 12 far too long. This episode opens up with Too Sweet. He's having night terrors. As you know, this poor child has been through a lot. He is probably suffering with PTSD uh, from whatever horrors he suffered inside of the prison industrial complex. And so Nova is really there for him. And that's why I always keep saying it takes a village. Many of us um, that feel as though we should be parents I myself personally thought at one point I wanted to be a parent too, but I just accept the fact that I am a villager. I am auntie. I am, what, what are my other little nieces, my friends, daughters call me? TT. TT Fifi. That's what they call me. So, you know, it's, it's just one of those things. I love kids and I just feel like I'm just here to help. I'm the co-parent. There you go. God, mama, whatever you want to call me, okay? And I think that's kind of probably what Nova's going to end up doing in this episode nova does go pay the public defender's uh office a visit under the pretense that she is there to write a story but she's really there to find out about two sweets case and we learn from the public defender that it is not glamorous this is not law and order baby this is the real deal holy field you see that stack that stack of folders once i get down to those then maybe i will get to his case that is is so discouraging it is underfunded and understaffed and as she pointed out in her town hall meeting with uh, melissa harris perry you know it's like but they don't mind getting bail money though but that's not the public defender's fault that's the municipality's fault the parish's fault for mismanaging funds if you ask me uh are, we have a constitution that says that everyone's entitled to due process and uh how is that due process how is that? The the public defender said what's going on is inhumane. We don't have the money or manpower. And it's almost as if we're all in purgatory. And that's for the attorneys. And that's for the uh, defendants that they are defending. It's just something to think about. You know, when people talk about the criminal justice system and how, you know, it's fair. It's, it's not fair. It's a money game. It really is in some respects it is because let's just be real. If he had a paid attorney, it would have gotten processed a little bit better. But when you have to defend on this, depend on the assistance of the uh, county or state or whatever, you're kind of screwed. So Nova, I think, is going to be writing another news story about the underfunding of the public defender's office and how the attorneys are overworked and overwhelmed. But the big benefit in that is, is helping people, and uh, but you don't get paid a lot of money. And that's why it hurts so much when you go to law school and you rack up a lot of debt and you can't pay your student loans hardly. But I think now they do now what they call a pay as you go, pay as you earn. And then after 10 years, your loans are forgiven. So there you go. During this town hall, uh, I guess 
I don't know, is Routina Wesley a Delta? Because you know Melissa Harris Perry is a Delta. You know what? Because I'll be like trying. She's about, I just want to give my soror and journalist, award winning journalist. I was like, y'all, now I know Melissa a Delta, but is Routina a Delta? Anyway, y'all know I'll be down with that NPHC, okay? Now she's Panhellenic Council. So, you know, she's a journalist and an activist. Uh, one of the things she said is, and I think this is a message for any of us, including myself, any community, we should be using our platform to empower and advocate. She said that no minor should be going to an adult prison. They are not mentally equipped to handle the emotional and psychological trauma of a prison. And you know from the Browder case uh, out of New York that look at the results. He was out of jail free. And was never really free in his mind. And he ultimately committed suicide. And that broke his mama's heart. And she ultimately died from a heart attack. Because her baby boy killed himself. And she could do nothing to help him. We learned that Nova is not affiliated with the uh, Black Life Matters movement. And I think that was probably part of the problem with her and Chantal. And why they couldn't see eye to eye. Because I think that. She just didn't want to be affiliated with that, that she wanted to do things her way and have her own dialogue. Um, and, you know, sometimes we don't see eye to eye. I, I personally, I, I appreciate Black Lives Matter. But at the same time, I think there are, there's a better way for us to send a message. And I've always said at the end of the day in the United States and pretty much anywhere in the world, what it comes down to is money. Greenbacks. And I think boycotting is the best thing you can do. Although, like I said, I may be, yeah, maybe I'm being a hypocrite, but Amazon is my friend. There you go. And, you know, they are on the people's side. So, so Calvin, as I call him, White Chocolate, is in the audience. Oh, that is one good looking white man, honey. Ooh, he don't look as good as somebody I recall from undergrad, but I ain't going to talk about him on here. He in the audience, girl, he's so moved by Nova. And being educated, he done called down here to the DA's office and got two sweets case dismissed. Amen. Okay. Hey, it got worked out. And she was like, what? And he was like, you know, because uh, but, but when he called to tell her this news, she was up there reading a book and she done slammed her to a high cab. And I said, oh, shit, look at that million dollar smile. Go ahead, Routina, Miss Nova. Okay. He says that uh, he had some good news for her. He told her that he loves her, but she said, I can't be doing this back and forth. I don't want to share you. Uh, I I'm tired of being broken. And then he goes, <laughs> I left my wife. I was like, what? Wait a minute. I said, uh, you know, left his wife. I was like, well, damn, Nova. Just call her sunshine because she got that good, good. Make a white man leave his wife. Okay. And kids. Okay. Uh, back at the high yellow. But Roberta, oh, nasty self. By the way, I had, I had posted about Roberta in one episode. And the girl that actually plays Nova actually liked my tweet. I was like, ooh. But then again, she knows she's a character, right? So she, her name is Ninja. I forgot what her name is, but her first name is Ninja. I assume that's how she pronounces it. This was funny to me. I had never heard this one before. She was telling one of her homegirls as Aunt Vi was walking onto the scene, talking about this dude, talking about he want to go Dutch. She was like, please, when I was a kid, I didn't even play double Dutch. And now I'm a grown ass woman. What makes you think I want to go Dutch now? Okay, Psh, he better get out of here. And if I was like, I know one thing, y'all better go find something to do. She was like, ain't nobody in here. We'll find something. Get busy. And so Roberta tells her, you really need to get over Hollywood. And, you know, maybe you should go out with us tonight at to the juke joint. I said, I go to the juke joint to listen to some music. Shout out to Andrews. At that time, the delivery man named Dale was coming in. He's like, what y'all know about the juke joint? And I was like, oh, this is not going to end well. She took, we never left some some about it. What you know? And so he was looking at Vi the whole time. I was like, dang, I'm Bobby pulling these young men. Go ahead. Okay. And that Kruger. Okay. Getting your Kruger on. So um, Vi is going to go out. Meanwhile, Hollywood is back in town. And uh, I guess him and Ralph Angel roommates just straight kicking it. He informs us that he has filed for divorce, but he doesn't want to deal with Unva until he got that paper in his hand because he feels like that would be the way to win her back so that he can say, hey, I filed these divorce papers and I'm all yours. 
Uh, and we also know from last episode that Anva said that she doesn't think that, you know, Hollywood is a bad person. Um, well, during this time, uh, she comes by the house and Ralph Angel like, Oh, yeah, he's been back for, I guess he had been back for a few days, but hadn't even come by to see her. And so Hollywood walked out when uh, Ralph Angel called him, because he calls him Wood. Wood, come on out here. Come on out here. Get a visit. And I'm about to brought by some mac and cheese. Now, she talking about, well, I just thought I would come by and get y'all some mac and cheese. And she was like, but you've been back all this time? And you ain't think to come by and say hi? Oh, no. Mm -mm. She grabbed mac and cheese. Bob was like, what about your baby? Uh, Ralph Angel and Blue might be hungry. They might want some mac and cheese on Vi. Child of Vi got to step it. And she threw it in the trash. I was like, she's from, I got to go to work. And honey, she was working that wrap dress. I said, come on through, Diane Von Fusterver. Okay. A uh, wrap dress. But I said, go ahead, on Vi. Okay, she's showing you that, uh-uh, I do not need to be up under you. Um, but I, I, I just didn't think that was necessary, and she didn't give him an uh, opportunity to, um, to explain. Uh, but what I found funny was when um, they were talking and standing in the middle of damn street, and he was telling Ralph, and Ralph said, did you get them divorce papers yet? And Hollywood was like, nope. And maybe you played this all wrong. I certainly didn't play it right. Also in this episode, we see that uh, Ralph Angel is the businessman. Uh, oh, he looks so good sitting back behind that desk, didn't he, ladies? Oh. It don't make no sense for a young man to be that fine. And have you seen his brothers? Child, them some, them some beautiful gunning men, ain't they? Oh, Jesus. Hello, Mother Africa. Up next, Hollywood and Ra sipping on a little something, something. And they talking about how, you know, Vi treated him like a trick off the street. And Holly and, and, and Ralph Angel seems to be very happy. And, you know, Hollywood said, I ain't, I ain't seen you grin that hard since Hush was a puppy. I, so, Boogie, who is Kiki's, uh, we learn in this episode, is Sister Kiki's uh, stepfather, as it turns out comes by too and they're gonna go to the juke joint i said this is not going in very well needless to say everyone in this episode ends up at the juke joint but not everyone stays when they get there roberta and unvi and dayo are turned up on the dance floor and uh she dancing hollywood comes in he about to bust up in between them but rap angel said i don't think that's something that you want to do Next thing you know, he like, I'm out. Then Ralph Angel like, damn, he killed the boys not out. Ralph Angel goes in behind him. And then by that time, I'm like, who that show was fun. But baby, I got to go. And then Dayo talking about, oh, no, we can keep the party going in my house. I got some music and all. And we, I was like, she just, I mean, I know she know you from delivering. Because she was like, I'll see you next delivery day. But, uh, dude. That I'm fine. She is a lady. Have some respect. She was like, I'm going home alone and get in my bed alone. See you next delivery day. I said, go ahead, I'm fine. Let them know. Don't be giving up the cooking nookie on the first day. Uh, Charlie is ignoring Ralph Angel's phone calls. Uh, she has a good reason, but I'm just like, girl, answer you. Y'all you, all supposed to be partners, as he pointed out, ultimately in this episode. Well, uh, what is happening is that Charlie and Remy are out looking at an old abandoned sugarcane mill. And she has decided that she is willing to pay $9 million to get it. And she also believes that she can rope in the Stinger's owner and have him put in at least half and be able to invest in helping take over or, or overthrow the Landry's and their hold that they have over St. Josephine's Parish. Remy's like, are you serious? Are you crazy? Uh, I said, Remy basically is a doubting Thomas. Every time something come up, he's the only voice of reason in, in this damn thing. Because everybody else like, it's Charlie. We just let her do we in her world. You know, we just in it. Um, but Remy is trying to tell her that many have tried to slay the Goliath of the Landry Boudreaux family. But look, look at this meal. Do you think that they thought they could take them on too? And look what happened. They failed too. Charlie uh, essentially told him, look, I'm a businesswoman. I'm the CEO. 
Uh, I have taken on bigger and far worse than them. I can I can slam. I said, all right, girl, she did not come to play. She came to slay. Everybody needs to get in formation. Um, Charlie then also asked him if he can round up a few of the farmers. That's when Remy says, I feel used. I was like, you like that girl to use you. You up that time. I keep on using me until you use me up. I said, I know that's what you thinking, Remy. That's what you thinking. Um, but then he asked her out on a formal date. And so they're going to go out on a date. Maybe, maybe not. Uh, Micah is in, in sister Kiki are continuously getting closer together. I said, I look at this little young puppy love, but how old is this sister Kiki? Is she 16? How old is this little girl? She better not mess with my baby. Um, but he asked her, you know, why do you call Boogie? If that's your dad, why do you call him Boogie? And she goes, well, my dad abandoned me a long time ago. Boogie essentially has been my dad, more of a father than my own biological father. And he was like, oh. And then she asked, have you talked to your dad? He goes, no, I haven't talked to him. She was like, well, you really should think about talking to him. And then he just pops off about my dad. He be out hanging out with hookers and stuff. And I don't want to hang out with him. And da, 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 and all that stuff. And she goes, okay. And then he was like, I'm sorry. And she was like, never apologize for how you feel. And I said, look, it's just a key key. That's, that's what happened. These southern gals, we, we are so full of wisdom, even at a young age, okay? I felt in that moment when they started kissing and hugging, I said, cue the high five, I'll spend quality time with you. Hey, I miss Tony Thompson, I really do. So she was telling him that she was having trouble with calculus and he said, no problem, I can help you. And she's like, uh, you've been out of school for a long time. So needless to say, they end up having a little study group with her and her friends. And Micah actually apparently is a very good tutor. Charlie, her theme song for this episode was Tupac's My Ambitions as a Rider. I won't deny it. I'm a straight rider. You don't want to fuck with me. Got the police rushing after me. My ambitions as a rider, rider, rider. Hey. So Charlie is on the setup and the come up and the setup is real. Baby. She called uh she called Felix's wife Lena. Remember, Lena was the one acting funny style with her after the fallout, okay? Because in her meeting with the Stinger's owner, he says, do you honestly think that I could get Davis to play as well as he does without Felix? So basically, in her mind, in her wheelhouse, she's like, okay, fine. You're not going to mess with Davis solo dolo. I'm going to set this up so that my child can have his dad nearby. I can handle the business I need to for my family. And we can make this a win-win situation. So, uh, Lena, girl, let me holler at you. Meet me down here to the bar at the Westin. And, and let's have a girl's talk. Girl, because it's been too long. Because your sister live here, right? Mm -hmm, girl, I'll, I'll holler. So they meet at the bar. They are having a conversation. Turns out that Lena and Felix never met with uh, Goldie. Charlie lets Lena know, I met with her. Do you know what happened that night? Lena kind of looks away. And then she goes, hey, Hey, let me, this is what we going to do. Uh, what you're going to do is, since you said you don't like Milwaukee, you're not going to take that deal. And you're not going to take the deal in New York either. You're going to convince Felix that he's going to come play for the Stingers. My uh, son needs his daddy. And uh, we need to make this happen. Because part of the problem she has is the fact that Lena kept saying that you should give take Davis back because y'all had such the fairy tale romance. Well, she, that's when, I think that was the triggering point for her. And that's when she told her, you're going to say that you want to move down to New Orleans so you can be close to your sister. Um, it's too cold in Milwaukee. You just don't think that New York is a good idea. Basically, it's all about her and her family. And so she was like, you trying to blackmail me? She was like, it's all about spin and reputation. That's, that's all I'm saying. So Lena laughs in her face about, you know, this is what you're going to do. And that's when Charlie was like, ho, I did not come to play with you. Let me tell you something. I have a tape of Goldie saying exactly what happened. And if you don't convince Felix to do what I just told you to do, I can get it to every gossip site, every blog, everywhere. So hook it up, girl. Work your magic. And if you're anything like me, it will ruin your fairy tale. I saw. Oh, shit. 
I said I can't. So to wrap up this episode, Hollywood is butthurt. He decides to pack up and leave because number one, essentially Darla is living there now. And he was like, you got somebody. But you could tell that Ralph Angel was really, really sad that Hollywood was leaving. And I guess in some respects, Hollywood is like an uncle to him and a father figure now, especially since his father is deceased. And Hollywood probably had been around the family for a long time. It's, it's hard to let your uncle go. Um, when when he's been around for so long ralph andrew's like i'm gonna come visit you and i'm gonna come do all this he ain't got to worry about being lonely so when hollywood leaves i was laughing i said lord him and darla all hugged up and stuff and i guess he was about to go break her off like he did that time he knocked on the trailer park door and 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 that was the last time we saw darla for a few episodes i said he must have laid her out and so what you doing miss pumpkin come here um I, I think that Hollywood just felt lonely, like he ain't got nobody, and once he gets his stuff together, he will, um, you know, he'll be back, maybe, if Vi takes him back. It kind of made me tear up in that scene. Uh, when she comes, when Charlie returns to the house after she just stood up Poe Remy, because while she was uh, about to lay in the Lena, um... Remy calls and was like, dude, we had a date and I'm at your door. Where you at? Here's the other kicker with Charlie. Charlie is getting a series of texts from Davis. Davis is saying that Micah is not responsive. She gets to the house. Micah's at the house having a good time with his little friends and their little study group. The girls are geeked to see Miss Charlie born along West because they say she is fabulous, honey. They love her, okay? Which Charlie's kind of like, oh, okay. But you could tell Charlie mine wasn't in that moment. So as soon as she gets in the bedroom, and she, even though Micah is not doing any of these things, she calls David to Mike, yeah, you need to get down here because your son is wilding out. He's out of control. He won't listen to me. He's hanging up the You know, all these buzzwords uh, to get Davis to want to show up. It's hilarious. I was like, and Charlie, like, I feel so bad that I lied. But you know, at the same time, he need to get down here and take care of his son. Okay? Okay, so tonight, what are we going to see? Are you excited? This is the season finale. Um, I'm excited. I have a feeling we probably won't see Queen Sugar again until next year around this time. I have a feeling they're going to pull a power on us. Uh, so in this episode, we will see that Davis will return and Micah is telling him he's selfish and he don't like him. Uh, Charlie is at odds with her siblings, uh, but basically she came to win. And Ralph Angel even said in this episode when he was trying to tell her, you know, that he had come up with a better way of getting the sugar cane to St. James Parish. But she hasn't told them that she's trying to get a meal and all this. Other. She hasn't disclosed anything. And these are her business partners. Um, so... Uh, Tell me, comment down below what you think you think, what you anticipate to happen uh, tonight. I know East Coast, Central Time Zone, y'all have already seen the finale, but don't ruin it for the rest of us. As a matter of fact, I'm not even following your news feeds, Helena. I saw those postings. Anyway, uh, everyone have a great night. And again, I will be back on here later tonight to wrap up this series, Queen Sugar. Good night.